The next question is from the Saya Lee. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, on a scale from one to ten, how difficult is college compared to high school? High school is just non-stop. You you never really get a break. You have classes every single day, and you have homework for most of your classes every single day, and it's it's due the very next day, and you have to get that done. Whereas college, it's still a lot of work, and it's still really difficult. But you have. You, you have this aspect of, hey, I'm only spending three hours in class each day, so I have the rest of the day to myself. How am I going to spend that time? How am I going to manage my time to make sure that I get all my problem sets or I write this rough draft of this essay and get all that done? I think on a scale of one to 10, difficulty wise, well, it's hard to judge, it's hard to gauge difficulty because there are different aspects of college that are difficult. Academic wise, obviously the workload and the types of problem sets or projects or essays and tests are gonna be a lot more difficult than your high school classes where you could actually study for them and do well. In college is a little bit different because even if you do study a lot, you can still not do well compared to high school. And I think that's a big adjustment to make and realize that you're not always gonna get 100 on your bio test or your chem test. Like when, if, if a kid gets 100 on a test, like the kid's a genius, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that just doesn't it really, happen. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think making that adjustment of you're not always gonna have an A in your class, that's definitely a difficult um, adjustment to make. Oh yeah, and also in college, rather than high school where you have grades just being constantly pumped in the grade book. Oh, oh I know. College, there's, at least for my, my STEM classes, there's two midterms and a final. So the biggest thing is that you're not gonna have like an app or a website where you can constantly check your grades after every homework that you turn in or like a daily participation grade. It's like once a month, maybe like twice a semester where you'll get some kind of update. And even then, since you have so few tests or essays or problem sets, each one counts for so much that it gets difficult to kind of calculate what your actual grade is gonna turn out to be. Yeah, I walk out of my finals each semester. <laughs> you're praying, you're like, you're just, oh God, you, you, fingers you crossed. You have a feeling of like how you did, but you have absolutely no idea what your grade's gonna because be. Because your finals and your midterm count for almost 50, 60% of your final grades. So there's so much emphasis on one test that that's the part where it gets pretty stressful. And that's why finals week is so stressful. Cause you have like not just one final, but like three or four, or even five for all your classes. So yeah. That's when it gets hard. And definitely uh, finals week is tough, but your midterms will kind of stack up throughout the semester. Oh, the like teachers don't coordinate, right? So you may have you may have like two midterms, like one after another, and you, you're you taking classes still. Like midterms yeah. don't stop classes. So you, you kind of have to manage your time to not only keep up with the work for your classes, but also start studying for the midterms. How do you guys balance academics, social life, YouTube, and other aspirations while being chilled out at the same time? You don't. <laughs> All jokes aside, we've mentioned this before, but like we constantly say, time management is so important, like structuring out your schedule to make time for your academics, make time for your homework, but at the same time, have a day to film videos, edit them, vlog, whatever you need to do, because I mean, being an entrepreneur and being a YouTuber, like it is a huge time commitment. It's a full-time job. Like sure, you guys take 10 minutes to watch one of our videos, but it that, probably takes like an hour to film, edit, produce and everything. Honestly. Yeah, I mean, 30 minutes to write a script, 30 minutes to film, and then probably two hours of editing on top of that, and it's a lot. And it might be a little unfair to say this, but we are at an Ivy League school, so obviously the academics are a priority, and our professors don't care that we're making no. videos. Like, there's no <laughs> excuse, like, sorry, coach, I can't turn in my piece set. I was editing a video. Like, no one, <laughs> no one yeah, so I think the biggest thing is time management, as, as Nick said. Um, I know, like, me in high school, like I, my high school, you know, they give you your little agendas with your high school name on it and then you're supposed to like write down like the homework you have for each class and no one ever uses them, right? They're completely useless. I didn't use that in high school. Then I get to college, not only do I have to balance classes, P sets, um, then I have to balance extracurriculars, social YouTube, life. YouTube on top of that, social life, and it's, it's absolutely wild. So I found myself kind of slithering into the, the typical, stereotypical Ivy League student who has everything Played on their GCAL. Yeah every single event, even if it's just like lunch with a friend, you you have to plan it out because there's only 24 hours a day and at Yale or Princeton, there's not enough time. And sleep is important. All right, our next question is, what is something you wish you knew before starting college? All right, so the biggest advice I wish somebody would have told me is specifically when it comes to the first couple weeks and you're getting to know everyone. I, I was definitely trying to be social and trying to meet as many people as possible, but those first two, three weeks are very crucial when it comes to kind of developing how your freshman year will go. A lot of the times people's friend groups will become pretty like locked down after a month or two and it's it's hard to kind of kind of move around. So if I had any advice for anyone that's going into college right now is if you're going to your college orientations over the summer, be the first one to introduce yourself. Try to meet as many people as possible. 
because at the end of the day, after two or three weeks, it's it's going to be a lot harder, especially as you're going into sophomore or even junior year. It's yeah. kind of going off of that. I think the opposite of that is don't overdo it. Like, don't try and be that freshman kid who thinks he's so cool. Like, calm down. Like, going into college, there are going to be a lot of feelings that are going to overwhelm you, whether it's excitement or nervousness or whatever it is. And it's really important that you make a good first impression on other people because at our schools, the campus is so relatively small that your name is easy to get around. Like. Nick Che, Josh Beasley, like people know them, us as like the YouTubers. And if people didn't like us, then that would, that could lead to a bad reputation for us. So I think it's really important to just, so going into the first few weeks, make sure that you're just being smart about what you're doing and, and how you're acting around other people. Yeah, definitely don't try to be a different person in yeah. college. Just be yourself, but try to meet as many people as possible. I mean, obviously don't overdo it, but those first weeks are super crucial. Make the most of it. It's going to be an absolute blast. Top bunk or bottom bunk? Bottom. bottom. Be honest, was the Ivy League label slash prestige what drew you to your current school? In complete honesty, 100%, I will say that the Ivy League does have some kind of importance when it came to me deciding what college I went to. I mean, like we said before, an Ivy League is just a title, right? But at the same time, there is some kind of prestige and some kind of clout, if you will call it, when it comes to telling people that, oh, you go to Princeton, oh, you go to Harvard, or when your parents, like, Think about how proud it makes them to tell them that your kid's going to this school or that school. It's not the only reason that drew me to that school, don't get me wrong. There are plenty of reasons why the Ivy League isn't the best school. It's incredibly competitive, classes are very difficult, um, but at the same time, having that title and having a degree from any of our universities will open up a lot of doors for you, whatever career you're going into after that. You know, Alumni associations, alumni networking is huge and that does have some kind of importance when it comes to the types of jobs that you're going to be trying to get. Yeah, definitely for me, um, a lot, I get this question a lot about why I chose Yale over a, an engineering school because I am an engineering major and if I wanted a better engineering degree, I would be at Georgia Tech right now because they have a phenomenal engineering program. I'm not at Yale for engineering. I'm at Yale to get an engineering degree at a liberal arts school that is in the Ivy League. It is a unique experience that, unlike any other because I, I'm an engineer, but I'm not, all my classes aren't engineering classes. I'm taking two, three engineering classes, but the rest of my schedule is filled with cool liberal arts classes, uh, English classes, architecture classes. Uh, I just signed up for a class this semester that talks about like law, technology, and like copyright law. It's, it's, it's cool stuff like that. And that's something that I just wouldn't be able to get at Georgia Tech. And in addition to that, the residential college system, just the people that you meet, it's just, it, it can't compare. All right, guys, to interrupt the brief programming, we have a message from our sponsor, Crimson Education. As you guys know, we've both used them in the past, but they are a great resource. If you're trying to get into something like the Ivy Leagues, they'll help you with test prep, essay prep, um, and they just have a bunch of resources. Yeah, so if you've been watching either of our videos for a while, I guarantee you, you've been recommended at least one of Crimson's videos that we created to make sure that students get into their top schools. They'll help you with whether it's essay topic brainstorming, SAT prep and tutoring, they are there for you. The best part is, is that it actually works and they've had over 460 offers to top 50 schools just since 2015 and they have over 25 offices across the globe so international students don't have to worry. If you're interested and want a customized affordable plan for your college needs, definitely check out the links down below and they're gonna be a great help for you. And back to your regular scheduled program. All right, someone asked, what's the best part about Paris? For me as a photographer, obviously, this architecture, this landscape, this whole city is so breathtakingly beautiful. Um, I have my camera with me every single day. I'm taking pictures and just getting to know the city. I think being here for a longer time is really beneficial because you don't feel like a tourist. Like I'm not even a tourist anymore. I have my own apartment. I'm buying my own food. I'm buying groceries and you really start to feel like a local Parisian. Even though I'm only here for two months, it, it really is unique living here. Yeah. Uh Unlike Nick, who's here for an internship, I am actually here for a study abroad program, which means I'm living with a host family, which I have to say is one of the coolest things I've ever done because I'm in class for three hours a day. I'm hanging out with friends after class and exploring Paris for three or four hours. But as soon as I get back home again, I'm speaking completely French. And it was really hard to adjust to at first, but now like me and Nick talking right now, this is probably the most English I've spoken today. and it's. It's just, you, you, you start thinking in a different mindset and you go to the metro and you just hear, you overhear conversations in French and you can, you can understand them. Or you go to a patisserie and you order a croque monsieur and you can, you can order that for yourself and they understand what you're saying. It's just, it's unlike anything I've ever done. And I think the coolest thing about being abroad and whether it's studying abroad or having an internship or whatever is that 
it opens you up to so many experiences that are so unique to that culture and things that a lot of your classmates and peers won't be able to do unless they're here with you. Um, you know, a lot of my friends are back home and they're just working while we're out here in Paris, like making yeah. videos, like having a good time, living our life. And I think that's such a cool opportunity that not a lot of people will get to have. So if that is present for you, definitely take advantage of that. Yeah, study abroad is a great move. This, the past three weeks here in Paris have been absolutely amazing. Just being able to wake up every morning, stare out my window and see, see Paris. It's just, it's- No yeah. words can describe it. Yeah, and I mean, I'm sitting here, like we're on a bench right now, but the Eiffel Tower is literally right there and the sun is just peeking through the bronze. This is such a good view. It is, it is absolutely crazy. Okay, so someone asked, do you ever wish you went to a school closer to home? Do you ever get super homesick? So I'm from Dallas, he's from Washington, DC, and we both go to school on the East Coast. So it is, it, so it's not like super close, but it's not also super far. Personally, there are a few times where I did wish I went to UT Austin because all my friends are there and they're all having a good time and all my high school groups are still together. So yeah. there, are, there are times where you miss out on that, but at the same time, you quickly realize that being away from your home will teach you so many lessons that people that still stay at home will never learn. You know what I mean? It's that like going to school two or three hours away as independent as you are being that close to home, it's not truly being independent. You don't have parents that can drive up if you get sick. Like you have to take care of yourself. You have to be truly independent and figure your own stuff out because there's no one to take care of you. Like you can't call mom to like do your laundry every week. So no. you, you quickly learn to become independent. And I think that's why I love being away from home so much. Yeah, I was definitely a little worried at first about what it was going to be like living on my own because I, I come from a big family. I have four younger siblings. I'm used to a, a crazy house, living with my family, enjoying spending time with my family. And when I got to Yale, I mean, it was a little bit of a shock because, you know, for, for the most part, it was, it was quiet in my dorm room, which was just something that I wasn't used to. Um, obviously, I, I shared a room with my brother back home, so it was, it was kind of an interesting experience sharing a room with somebody that wasn't family. But I did, I did feel a little homesick the first couple of weeks because it's just, it's just something brand new, something that you've never done before. But as soon as you get past those first couple of weeks, you realize like how incredible this opportunity is. You live on your own, you make your schedule, you choose when you want to do things. And along with that also comes a lot of responsibilities as in when am I going to do this incredibly large pile of laundry that I just don't want to do or when am I going to go shopping? Um, so that's that's definitely a little rough, but it's just it's just so fun living on your own. I love living on my own now. Like I think I haven't been I haven't been home for longer than a week and a half since since Christmas break, and it's fine. Like I I feel like it's perfect. Okay, so someone asked, how do you make money in college, and when do you find time to film for YouTube? That question actually goes hand in hand because they work very well with each other. We film YouTube videos to make money and then we use that money to buy our equipment so then we can film more videos to make more money. How to find time to make YouTube videos is like we said, is schedule out maybe a day or a couple of hours where you can just cram a bunch of videos or scripts that you have written out and then film um, another day and then edit it in another day. Yeah, at least for me, I have, I have my sit down videos and then I have my vlogs. My sit down videos, you'll see in a lot of them, like the consecutive videos, I'm like wearing the same shirt or something. That's because I filmed all of those in one day. I did the exact same thing. Yeah, and then you can just crank them all out and edit them all in one like three or four hour session. And that really helps. And then when it comes to vlogs, I will vlog and I will vlog a day and then I'll throw it into a folder on my computer. And most of the time I don't have time to edit it during the week. So I'll just stick it into a folder and wait till I have time. And then I'll go into that folder, edit it all up and post it. And for us, since we are at Ivy Leagues, a lot of our days are actually the same. Like a lot of the vlogs we see are just kind of mashups of different segments from one day or another week. So when it comes to vlogging, it's hard for us to do daily vlogs because our days are so similar. Like you guys yeah. would easily get tired of watching us go to the library or yeah. going to eat or like, yeah, what I found myself doing second semester is uh, I always had my camera on me and whenever something interesting happens, whether it was the, the freshman Olympics or TD day or spring fling at the end of the year, I would, I would film that. And when you get enough of these cool events together, I'd stick them together in a vlog and post them. Because yeah. like Nick said, no one wants to see me shower or brush my teeth or like every that. single day yeah it's just like college life does get somewhat repetitive so we're trying to bring you the most interesting aspects you guys have actually only seen half of this video if you want to see the other half make sure you guys go check out his channel subscribe to him he's an awesome magician he makes really great videos about college and you guys won't regret it so make sure you guys subscribe and i'll see you guys next time